So welcome back to the shop, friends. The family has been got some sort of a bug. We have been down for the count. I think the kids brought home home something from uh, the homeschool co-op, and we have just not been not been feeling well. So, but all I can offer you today is to turn on the camera and and talk about something that's important. All right. So to address a question that that, that has been coming in a lot lately, I don't know why, is what do you think of Jordan Peterson? Jordan Peterson, if you don't know, is a clinical psychiatrist. Uh, that has become very, uh, well, he's qu become quite famous, written a, um, a book, 12 Steps to Improve Your Life, um, has been on a speaking tour, and has done a ton of stuff on YouTube. He's been on all of the major podcasts, um, and, and is, uh, is, his message is really resonating with a lot of folks. So I actually have purchased his book, and I haven't got to reading it. It's on my stack of, of I got a couple books ahead of it. But what I did in preparation of this video to kind of like, well, what, why do I keep getting asked about this guy? And what is this all about? And, and why would people ask me? What, what, what is that? What, what's my opinion matter on any of this? So I went on to Joe Rogan's podcast and there was a section where he was a guest on there talking about personal accountability. Uh, and the thing that I found so interesting is as I was listening, listening to him speak, I saw uh, the reason why I think I get the, asked this question so often. It's that I think we, our message, it, it parallels, we parallel each other. But the interesting fact, uh, the, or the interesting thing about it, is that how can our message be so uh, in line with, one, with each other, and me being a, a, um, a Christian believer, and him being a hardcore, not anti-Christian, but an atheist? How can, how can two people that are so diametric, diametrically opposed in, in this particular thing um, have so much in common? And what I started to hear as I was listening to him explain this personal account, accountability message was that uh, this is nothing new. This is not something that, um, that Jordan has come up with on his own. Uh, this is, this is the old, he, he ha basically has taken uh, the, the every, everything that he was speaking of in this podcast from the New and the Old Testament. And I guess the reason where we diverge uh, as, is, where, is at the end when he comes to the, to the conclusion that you as a person can personally, all by yourselves, by gritting it out, can make these things happen all on your own without the help of, of any exterior inputs. And that's where I disagree with it, with Jordan. So we're talking about accountability. So he gives the analogy of, of a 17-year-old boy uh, being raised. Let's, let's just say that this fictitious boy, Mike, is in a public school. Um, let's say that he's uh, still living at home, doesn't have a car, doesn't have a job, not really doing all that well in school, smoking a little bit too much pot, spending way too much time with video ga games, and he has a terrible relationship with his parents. He's living in his own personal hell. Then he goes to school and he's talking to a guidance counselor and this guidance counselor tells him, well, you know, you need to love yourself for who you are and, and, and you're, you're okay the way you're at and, and I'm okay and you're okay and all of that. And the boy is thinking, well, if, if I'm okay, if I'm not doing anything wrong, why am I so miserable? Why am I living in this personal hell? And it's a very dangerous thing to tell someone like this. The truth of the matter is, is that he's not doing okay, is that he Maybe he shouldn't be spending so much time playing video games. Maybe he shouldn't be spending so much time drinking. Maybe he should be, be getting up early. Maybe he should be nice and, and respectful to his parents. If he were to do these things, would your life change? Currently, he's blaming everyone else. We, what, we, what we typically do, it's so hard to take that, to, to look at yourself and to really be objective and, and to look at yourself and say, you know what, there's something about myself that I don't like. Um, why is that happening? Well, it's easier to say, well, it's nothing that I've done. It's because this person has been unjust or this circumstance or I was raised in the wrong family or, or I didn't have every advantage that this other guy has. Start trying to compare yourself to other people builds only resentment um, and anger and frustration and you'll never go anywhere. So what Jordan is saying is, is that, he's, hey, you look, you need, to, you need to take a look at these situations. So you don't like the way that you... You, you, you don't like the, the relationship you have with your parents. Well, why is that? Well, because you're being disrespectful. Uh, I don't like that I'm, I'm not doing very well in school and I get bad report cards. Well, is the teacher 
treating you unjustly or, or look at yourself, well, the, the truth maybe is that maybe I'm not studying very hard. Or, you know what, I, I just don't feel like uh, I just, you know, I can't get a job and, 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 you know, no one will hire me and there's no work out there. Well, let's take a look at yourself. You can make excuses or you can say, well, actually, I smoke so much pot that I don't really have any motivation to get up and, and I don't take care of myself and I don't have any confidence. And I really, when I do go into a job interview, I wouldn't hire me. So that, that's what he's proposing. So... What he, what he talks about is, is that you need, to, you need to, to stop making excuses. You need to stop blaming other people for your current situation. And you, you need to identify those things in your life that are preventing you from, from success, from, a, from achieve, for achieving the thing that you want. And what happens with many of us is we kind of get complacent and we get in this rut and we don't really even have as he calls it, a trajectory. We don't even have a glide path to get out of the basement of our parents' house. We're kind of stuck there. We don't know where to go. Because we look at friends, we look at people on TV that have maybe achieved, at, maybe they're our own age and they've, they've achieved these great things. Maybe they have, have a great job. They've got a beautiful wife. They've got you know, some nice cars and, and they got a ski boat and they got some things going on. You start thinking, well, how, how did they get there? And, and I, 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 it's the, the obstacles for me to get there are so insurmountable uh, that there's no hope. And, the, and back to the basement, back to the video console, video game console. What Jordan's, what Jordan's t- talking about and what he says that, that is so wise is, is aim low. Aim low for this trajectory. Okay, so you're in a personal hell. You don't like your p- current situation. You may not be in your parents' basement. Maybe you're in a job that you hate. Maybe you're living in, in a horrible area, a dangerous neighborhood. Maybe, maybe you're driving a, a car that, that, that can barely get you to work that you worry about it's not going to work and you'd like to have a newer car, but you don't know how to get there, right? So you've got, you've got to identify these things that are preventing you to getting where you want to go and you need to make a traje- trajectory, but not a trajectory that's too steep. You're down here. Your friend up here with the ski boats up on top, that's a steep tra- trajectory. You can't, you can't hope to achieve that. You need to have something that's more realistic. You need to aim lower. And the thing that he, he, he the proponent, the place to start that he gives is uh, wake up and make your bed. Well, well, why is that important? Well, I thought about that myself and I thought, well, when's the last time that you made your bed? And then I, I, I couldn't remember. That's something my wife has always done. And I, so I had to ask myself, well, why are you not making your bed? Why are you not picking up your socks and clothes on the floor? And I had to take a page from his book and be brutally honest and brutally honest and, and look at myself and sat there for a half hour trying to answer this question. And what it came down to was this. It was pride. Pride that I didn't even know existed. And the pride was this. Well, you... you are the, you are the, the breadwinner of your family. You, you uh, have important things to do. There's, uh, you have uh, this big YouTube channel and you have uh, the million subscribers and all these things. You, you are above making your bed and, and putting these things away. And once I took a real honest look and I identified that pride was behind this, I began to understand what he's talking about with this principle of aiming low. Let me give you an example. We're back to the kid in the basement. He's thinking he wants to get a car so he can get a job, so he can get out of his current situation. But he aims too high for the car. He wants to buy something that's unattainable for him. He wants to go buy a new car. He's not content with driving an old car. He's not content with driving a car that he could actually get that would start to move him on that upward tra- trajectory to get him where he, where he wants. So for the, because he can't have the car he wants, he has no car at all. And there he is stuck in his current situation. He also gives the analogy with children. You know, we don't uh, we don't put expectations on children uh, that they're that are that so high that they're unable to achieve them because it will destroy them and it will break their souls and they'll get it will break their hearts. So you know they'll give up and they'll never be able to do it. Those expectations are not the same for all children. The expectations that we should make for ourselves are not the same for me that, as it would be for someone else. Uh, that's all different. We have to be realistic. Can I achieve this? And yes, as, as Jordan says, there's no, it's not heroic to wake up in the morning and to, to make your bet. No one's going to applaud you. No one's going to give you a, a trophy for that. But what it does is it takes, puts you on that first step of elevation, it makes you a little bit better than you were yesterday. 
makes you, uh, moves you in the direction. If I can do this, if I can accomplish this small thing, maybe that moves on uh, to um, actually uh, taking care of myself and shaving and, and, and keeping my hair cut and combing it and wearing decent clothes and not looking like a slob all the time. And maybe that's another step in that trajectory. Maybe because I did this, and maybe because I was willing to settle for drive a car that is embarrassing for me to be seen in, um, that that is a third step. And now that I've done these three things, you know, maybe now that I can get a job uh, that is not above my station, and not, uh, that I'm not aiming too high for, that I could actually have some hope of getting, yeah, it's not ideal and maybe I'm embarrassed to do it, but it's starting, you're starting to create options. And you're starting, you're, you're making a shift in the way you think from blaming someone else, blaming circumstances, using that as an excuse to not do anything to actually start moving in that direction. Now, he talks about having that look, sitting down and, and, and having that hard look at yourself um, and looking, what are these, what are the things in my life that are preventing me from getting where I want? Um, and how do I attack those and how do I destroy those? And this is where I think he's wrong. And this is, you know, it's so interesting to listen to him um, and to hear um, so many quotes from, from New Testament and the Old Testament, um, sometimes in context, sometimes out of context to make these individual points. And the interesting thing about it is that Jordan's no fool. Uh, he's a very smart guy, very intelligent guy, and he sees truth for where, he sees truth and he can identify it, and he, can, and he doesn't discount it uh, just because of some dogma. The thing, whenever, uh, the, the thing that's kind of, uh, kind of sad is whenever there's anything that is brought up to make a point that I use from Scripture, um, the, immediately when someone hears that, um, all the attacks come in, <clears throat> and, and unusually it's a, an attack of my intelligence. Well, you... You know, there, there's these ridiculous comparisons. Well, you know, why would I don't believe in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus, and you know that that the belief in the Christian Christian Judeo God is is no different than a Santa Claus or an Easter Bunny. But there is a difference, and, and the difference is manifested in the fact that this person is here, has heard this thing, has heard heard, heard this um, wisdom or, or the word of God, and is so angry about it that he needs to comment and and personally attack the the messenger. Um, he's there doing that, but he's never going to go over to a Christmas website or he's never going to approach someone in a Santa Claus costume or to an Easter egg party. He's never going to attack that person. And that's the reason because he knows that these things are, are not real, but he doesn't know that there isn't a God and that's frightful. And if you can attack that, if you can demean it, if you can push it away and, and pass it off as, as something that only a fool would believe, then it prevents you from actually getting in and doing the studying and, and working it out for yourself. That's the difference between uh, Jordan Peterson and a, an ignorant fool. Most of the time, you're not going to have someone approaching you with a counterpoint to Christianity uh, because they, <clears throat> they have went in and they have read both sides, they have weighed and considered the evidence, and they have made their own mind. They're simply parroting uh, something that they've heard they, uh, or, or someone has told them that, that it, it's, it's very rarely, very, very rarely that anyone has come to this conclusion on their own, and it's arrogance, um, and it's intellectual laziness. And <clears throat> to think that you and have never researched it for yourself. You have never dug in to see if there were truths or wisdoms or things that, that could help you in your life, uh, but you automatically resist them and, and ridicule and make light of anyone who would try to implement these things um, to improve their life. So, a, a bit of a tangent. So, here's the thing. So, Jordan goes on to talk about, so we need, once you take this look, you're going to see things in your life. Maybe 95% of the things you do are hindering you and preventing you from being the man that you want to be. And you need to burn those things away. You need to step away from yourself. You need to look at those things. You need to identify them and you need to burn them away. And they're not going to go away easy. I mean, anyone who has had to give up a smoking habit will realize it's not going to go away easy. Yes, it can be done, but it's a fight or drinking or drugs or, 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 or food or, or name your thing. But <clears throat> a lot of those things you're going to be able to identify you're going to be able to say, I'm 300 pounds and I shouldn't be 300 pounds. 
And you can make excuses and you can blame other folks or you can be honest with yourself and you can look at it and you can say, okay, I'm 300 pounds because I would rather sit and watch TV when I come home at night than doing something active. And I, and I, I make choices with food um, and these are the reasons why. I am personally responsible for me being 350 pounds, not someone else. When you can get to that point, you can start enacting change. And that's where I don't disagree with, with Jordan whatsoever. It's exactly the way it is. And him talking about burning off the things, burning off the old man and, and the wretched, this wretched man that I am is directly lifted from the New Testament. It is the teaching of Paul. It is the teaching of Christ about how the man that is opposed to Christ, the man that is siding with the world, is the man that needs to have all these things burnt away. So we have that in common. Now where jo Jordan loses me, and I think where he, he does um, some folks a disservice um, and misses the point is that I don't believe it's in within our ability to see everything wrong with us. Yes, we can see things that are obvious. We can see that we're morbidly obese. We can see that we spend too much time playing video games or we spend too much time smoking pot, therefore we're not motivated. We can see those things and we can start making those changes. We can see that we're, we need to put our pride away and, and maybe I need to, a little bit of extra money to get those credit card debts paid off. Well, instead of just continuing to complain about it, we could go lower ourselves down a little bit, swallow that pride and get a job delivering pizza at night three days a week and put all that money towards that debt. To, I mean, can you imagine? It, it takes a, it takes, it, it would be a, it would be a major body blow to your pride. Let's say you had, had a job that was maybe you thought was important. Maybe it is important. And you, but you've made bad choices and you find your family in debt. And the only way you can, you can get out of it is to take some, some job delivering pizzas to do it. How much respect would you have for yourself and how much humility have you taught yourself to actually to be able to knock on that first door and do that pizza? I mean, it would be tough. It would be tough for a lot of guys to do it, but man, how much would you admire someone that had the ability to do that and saw that I'm in a bad situation? And I, can, I, I gotta stop complaining about it. I gotta do something about it. And, and it's not going to happen. I'm not going to get a, a, a promotion at work that's gonna double my income. So I'll, I'm willing to do this instead. That's talking about aiming low. Where, again, where we diverge is this, is that yes, we can see a lot of these things and we can make those corrections. But I believe, it, it seems to me, that we cannot see everything that we need to change. C.S. Lewis, he gave the perfect analogy. So let's say we're at that situation and, and we're going to represent our body and our life as a, as a house. And it's a small one-room hovel and uh, it's got a, a squeaky door that uh, with a, about, to, about to fall off the hinges and it's got a, a leaky roof. And we're sitting inside and, and the wind is blowing the door open and the leak is dripping on our bed and we're just thinking, my goodness, my life is terrible. If I could just get that door fixed, and if I could just stop that leaky roof, my life would be complete. My life would be perfect. And so you identify these things, and, and you fix those two things, and you find out, well, uh, yeah, the, the door doesn't blow in anymore, and the roof doesn't leak, but I'm still living in a one-room hovel. The difference is, is that when you take that, that principle, and you take that ownership, and you do make that hard look at your life, but you don't just try to gut it out on your own, but you involve uh, God, the Creator, Jesus, whatever you want to, however you want to say it. You in, in, involve Him to help you. Have someone help you with this, and the outcome is very different. And the interesting thing that C.S. Lewis talks about says, okay, so we'll take that same analogy. We have the the door and the roof, and and so you partner with Christ, and you come like I can't do this all on my own. I need some help with this. I've identified that I've got problems that are help, keeping me down, um, but I, I I've tried. I've tried and failed. I've tried to quit smoking a hundred times. It doesn't work. I've tried to quit drinking so much. I've tried to stop being impatient with my wife. And I know if I'm going to be truly honest with myself, I know that I can only do it for a week or two. And then I fall back into my old routines. That's the thing. Jordan is, is operating under the, or it seems to me that he's, he, he's basically giving the message that if you want it bad enough, you can do it all on your own. And yes, there are some people who can, but it's not very many. And if we're going to be honest with ourselves, it's probably not you, and it's probably not me to be able to ought to be able to do that completely on our own. So, the the back to the C.S. Lewis analogy. So we have the same guy with the house. So he's now he's standing there looking at it with Christ, 
and they're looking at it like, okay, it, he, Christ, can you, Jesus or God, can you help me? Can you fix my roof and my door so that my life can be complete? He goes in and, and he, he doesn't fix the door. He tears the door off and he tears the roof off. And you start looking around and you're thinking, wait a minute, I asked you to come in here to help me to fix these things that would have fixed my life, but you've made it worse. And then you look as he's, he's knocking walls down and he's taking the whole thing down to the foundation. And what you thought was a, someone who was going to come and help you improve your life has just made it tenfold, a hundredfold worse. What you don't understand was he was not content with leaving you in a one-room hovel. He has bigger plans for you. He can see things that we, even in our complete honesty, if we're looking at our life objectively, that we can't see potentials. And he can also see things that are preventing us from, from achieving success or being as good as we can be. We're just not, avail, not able to do it. So the thing is, is what, to continue with this story, this analogy, which is not perfect, but it is an analogy, is that he starts building. He starts knocking out a wing over here and starts building a, a second, second story over here. And, and he, he's pushing the back out into a, a, into a nice uh, uh, gazebo and, and he's building a, a shop over here. And, and all of these things are starting to happen. But you're still, you, know, you, you, <laughs> you see the point that I'm trying to make? So yes, ultimately he came in and, and, and was unwilling to fix the things that you wanted fixed because he saw that that was never going to get you where you wanted to be. He had greater plans for you. He had greater potential. And by partnering with him, yes, you had to work along and you had to carry a few boards and you had to, 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 you know, to, to <laughs> put the cabinets in and everything. But the end result was this, is that now you're living in a mansion. Now you have uh, something that was so far beyond your wildest expectations and, and so far outside what you thought your abilities were because you partnered with him and he took you to a place you never thought you'd be able to achieve. I has not seen nor ear heard the glory that God has in store for those who, who love him and seek him. And, and so that's, that's why, where I, uh, why I disagree with Jordan, or the point where I think that he, he, has a, he has a truth, but he's missing the most important part. Jordan would have you... Fi uh, that's not fair. Uh, that's not fair. I, I, I don't know what Jordan would have you do, but the interesting thing is, is that I admire him and I respect him tremendously uh, because he is not willing to, to look at something <clears throat> that he may not believe um, uh, and, 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 and basically just cast it aside that this has no value to me. This has this old, these old writings, this Old Testament, this New Testament has no value to me because I, I don't believe in these things. I need to find something else. A wise man will see that there is value in, in, in things even if you disagree with them. Um, and so that's the part of it. So the, the point that I want to make is if you, that, and I'll include a link to this podcast, is that, yes, aim low. Start making those ch changes. Look at your life and, and look at the things and be honest. Be brutally honest. Ask some other people. You want to know what takes courage? Is that to go ask someone that you trust that won't be a yes man, that will give you the honest truth, what they think about you about a particular thing. And it's rare uh, to find a person that will actually give you the truth. But if you don't have that, um, and you really don't know, you can't figure out what it is that's keeping you from what you want to do, um, you partner with God and he'll show you. And he'll knock that wing out and he'll tear that roof off. And he'll take you to a place that you never thought you'd be able to, to uh, ever to achieve. So um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing else to say. You know, I wrote, I watched that thing, that podcast with him and Rogan three or four or five times and wrote all these notes and I can never talk off of notes, you know. You see, it's one thing, I, I respect and I appreciate someone who has an idea or a thought that they want to convey that they can just turn on the camera and, and to talk and speak it. Um, you, 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 you watch, you know, what jump cuts are, you watch all these people that want to make these points and they jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut. Well, that's easy to do. That's, that's cheating. That's using hindsight. You can write everything down. You can speak for five seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds and forget what you wanted to say. It's hard. And then go back and cut and edit and you know, watch the edit and like, oh, I forgot. I wanted to make this point and go back and do it. So I, I appreciate, so it's, yeah. So <laughs> that's all I have today. So Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.